Have you ever felt like you were drowning in a sea of judgment where every whisper and glance seemed to cut through your very soul? Picture with me, if you will, a crisp autumn morning in 1987. A skinny, awkward 13, where boy stands in front of his bathroom mirror, tears streaming down his face, desperately trying to scrub off the bright red paint that his classmates had sprayed on his new white shirt. That boy was me. You know what's remarkable about that morning? It wasn't the pain, the humiliation, or even the ruined shirt that I remember most vividly. It was the moment I looked into that those tear-filled eyes in the mirror and heard a voice inside me say, this moment doesn't define you. Their actions don't determine your life. Right now, some of you are nodding because you've been there. Maybe not with red paint, but with words that cut deeper than any knife, with rejection that felt like a punch to the gut, with betrayals that left you questioning everything you believed about yourself. What changed that day wasn't my circumstances. Those bullies didn't suddenly become kind, and my social status didn't magically improve. What changed was something far more powerful, my perspective. I realized that I had been giving away my power piece by piece to people who hadn't earned the right to hold it. Raise your hand if you've ever let someone else's opinion of you, you change the way you walk, talk, or live your life, look around. That's right. Nearly every hand in this room is raised because we've all been there. But today, we're going to talk about something extraordinary. We're going to explore how to live in such a way that nothing and no one can disturb your peace, shake your confidence, or derail your purpose. This isn't about building walls or becoming cold and distant. It's about building something far more powerful, an internal fortress of unshakable peace. Think about a lighthouse for a moment. While storms rage and waves crash against its base, it stands unmoved, unwavering, continuing to shine its light. That's exactly what we're discussing today, becoming that lighthouse in your own life. You see, that 13-year-old boy in the bathroom didn't know it then, but that moment of pain would become his greatest teacher. It taught him, taught me, that we have a choice in how we respond to the world's attempts to break us down. The same water that softens the potato hardens the egg. It's not about what happens to you. It's about what you're made of. You were created with a strength that surpasses anything this world can throw at you. You were designed with a purpose that extends far beyond the opinions and judgments of others. Let me share something powerful with you. Years after that incident, with the red paint, I ran into one of those bullies at a local coffee shop. He recognized me immediately, and I saw the shame wash over his face. But instead of feeling that old, familiar sting of hurt and anger, I felt something entirely different. Compassion. Because I'd learned that his actions had nothing to do with my worth and everything to do with his own internal struggles. You see, when you truly understand your value, when you grasp the magnitude of your purpose, other people's actions lose their power over you. It's like being in an airplane soaring high above the clouds. Down below, there might be storms raging, but up here, up here, the sun is always shining. Some of you are sitting there thinking, but you don't know my situation. You don't know how deeply I've been hurt, how unfairly I've been treated. You're right, I don't. But what I do know is that your pain, your struggles, your disappointments, they're real, but they're not your destiny. Diamond doesn't start out beautiful and brilliant. It undergoes immense pressure, intense heat, and countless cuts before it reveals its true splendor. Every time someone has tried to dim your light, they've actually been applying the pressure needed to help you shine brighter. I want you to do something right now. Close your eyes for a moment. Think about the last time someone's words or actions really got under your skin. Feel that sensation in your body, that tightness in your chest, that knot in your stomach. Now imagine those feelings as clouds passing through the vast sky of your consciousness. They're there, you acknowledge them, but they don't define the sky. They're temporary visitors in your permanent peace. This journey we're embarking on today isn't about becoming invincible, but it's about becoming unstoppable. It's about understanding that while we can't always control what happens to us, we have absolute control over how we respond. You know what's fascinating? 
The scientists have discovered that the human heart generates an electromagnetic field that extends several feet beyond our bodies. This field can actually influence the people and environment around us. When you learn to maintain your peace, when you master the art of remaining unbothered, you're not just changing your own experience. You're literally changing the energy of every room you walk into. Let me tell you about Sarah, a woman in our community who embraced these principles. She worked in a toxic environment where office politics and gossip were as common as coffee breaks. For years, she let it affect her, taking every snide comment and passive-aggressive email personally. She'd come home drained, and spending her evenings replaying conversations and imagining clever comebacks. Then she learned about living unbothered. She started practicing what we're discussing today. Within months, not only did her stress levels plummet, but something remarkable happened. Her entire office dynamic began to shift. Why? Because when you refuse to engage with drama, when you maintain your peace regardless of circumstances, you become like that lighthouse we talked about, a beacon of stability in the storm. This isn't about wearing a mask or pretending things don't hurt. It's about developing such a strong sense of self that external circumstances lose their power to disturb your inner peace. It's about understanding that your value isn't determined by other people's ability to see it. Think about water for a moment. When it's disturbed, it becomes muddy, cloudy, difficult to see through. But when it's allowed to be still, everything settles and it becomes clear again. Your mind works the same way. When you're constantly reacting to every little thing that bothers you, your thoughts become muddy, your judgment clouded. But when you learn to remain unstirred by external disturbances, clarity comes naturally. As we continue this journey together, I want you to remember something crucial. This transformation we're talking about, it doesn't happen overnight. Just like building physical muscle requires consistent exercise, building emotional resilience requires daily practice. But here's the beautiful truth. Every time you choose peace over reaction, every time you choose to remain unbothered in the face of provocation, you're building that spiritual and emotional muscle. You might be wondering, but what about when it really matters? What about when the stakes are high? That's exactly where we're heading next. We're going to explore how to maintain this unshakable peace even when the storms of life are at their fear fiercest. We're going to discover how to turn what could break you in to what makes you unbreakable. Because here's the truth. Your ability to remain unbothered isn't just about your peace of mind. It's about your power. When you master this art, you'll find yourself making better decisions, building stronger relationships, and achieving goals you once thought impossible. Why? Because you'll no longer be spending your precious energy on things that don't deserve your attention. Remember that morning in front of the mirror, that scare hurt 13-year-old boy, and he didn't know it then, but that moment of pain was actually the beginning of something beautiful. It was the first step on a journey toward unshakable peace, toward living life on his own terms, toward becoming someone who could stand in any storm and remain unmoved. And that's exactly where we're headed together. Are you ready to discover the power that comes when nothing and no one can disturb your peace? Are you prepared to transform every attempt to break you into an opportunity to grow stronger? Because that's what awaits us as we continue this journey together. That powerful moment in front of the mirror taught me something invaluable about mental fortitude. And I promise you, what I'm about to share will transform how you handle every challenge that comes your way. You see, mental fortitude isn't just about being tough. It's about being unshakable in a world that's constantly trying to shake you. When was the last time you felt completely at peace, even when everything around you was in chaos? Think about that for a moment. For some of you, it might have been years. For others, you might not remember ever feeling that way. You know what fascinates me? The way bamboo grows. For the first four years after planting, you see virtually nothing above ground. But during that time, it's developing an elaborate root system underground. Then in the fifth year, it grows up to 90 feet in just six weeks. Your mental fortitude works the same way. It's developing deep roots even when you can't see the results yet. 
Let me tell you about Marcus, a successful executive who came to me feeling like he was losing his grip. Every morning, he'd check his email and feel his blood pressure rise. Every meeting felt like a battlefield. Every decision came with a side of anxiety. On paper, he had everything, the corner office, the salary, the respect. But inside, inside, he was crumbling. What Marcus didn't realize, what many of us don't realize, is that mental fortitude isn't about never feeling disturbed. It's about creating a space between the disturbance and your response. Think of it like a buffer zone, a sacred space where you get to choose how you'll react. Here's what's powerful. Your mind is like a garden. Every thought you allow to take root will either grow into flowers or weeds. When someone criticizes you, when life throws you a curveball, when things don't go as planned, these are all seeds being thrown into your mental garden. The question, will you water? You see, most people live in reactive mode. Something happens and they immediately respond. Someone cuts them off in traffic. They get angry. A coworker makes a snide comment. They get defensive. Their spouse forgets an important date. They feel, but what if I told you there's another way? Imagine wearing a suit of armor made not of metal, but of peas. A suit so powerful that negativity bounces off it like rubber balls hitting a wall. That's what mental fortitude gives you. It's not about becoming hard or cold. It's about becoming so solid in who you are that nothing can penetrate your inner peace without your permission. Let me share a technique that transformed Marcus's life and can transform yours too. I call it the three second reset. When something triggers you, take three seconds. In the first second, acknowledge the trigger. In the second second, take a deep breath. In the third second, remind yourself, I choose my response. Just three seconds can be the difference between reacting from emotion and responding from strength. But here's where it gets really interesting. And scientists have discovered that our brains are literally rewired by our habitual thoughts and responses. Every time you choose peace over chaos, calm over anger, you're not just making a momentary choice, you're actually creating new neural pathways. You're building what I call your mental fortress. Um, think about a river for a moment. Over time, it carves deeper and deeper channels into the earth. Your thoughts work the same way. The more you practice maintaining your peace, the deeper that channel becomes until staying unbothered becomes your natural. Remember Marcus? He started implementing these principles in his daily life. At first, it felt awkward like wearing shoes that didn't quite fit. But day by day, choice by choice, he began to transform. The same emails that used to ruin his morning became just pixels on a screen. The meetings that felt like battlefields became opportunities to demonstrate his newfound strength. Here's a powerful truth. It isn't about avoiding challenges. It's about approaching them differently. When you build this kind of strength, you start to see that the very things that once threatened to break you become the things that prove how unbreakable you are. Let me give you a practical exercise that you can start using today. I call it the mountain peak perspective. Imagine you're standing on top of a mountain, looking down at your life. From up here, you can see all the situations that usually bother you, but they look different from this height. That person who criticized you, from up here, they look tiny. That problem that seemed overwhelming. From up here, it's just one small part of a much bigger picture. You see, mental fortitude is about maintaining this higher perspective, even when you're in the valley. It's about remembering that you're the mountain, not the weather that passes over it. Storms may come, but they always pass. The mountain remains unmoved. Some of you might be thinking, but what about when the pain is real? What about when the situation truly is unfair? That's a valid question. And here's the truth. Mental fortitude doesn't mean you don't feel pain. It means you don't let the pain control you. It doesn't mean you don't recognize injustice. It means you respond to it from a place of power rather than powerlessness. So every great leader, every person who's ever achieved something remarkable faced opposition. They faced criticism. They faced it us out. What set them apart wasn't the absence of these challenges. It was their response to them. 
They had developed the mental fortitude to stay focused on their purpose, regardless of what others said or did. Let me share another powerful tool with you. I call it the echo test. Before you let something bother you, ask yourself, before you let something, will this matter in five years? If the answer is no, don't give it five minutes of your peace. This simple question can save you countless hours of emotional turmoil. You know, what's beautiful about developing mental fortitude, it's not just for you. When you master this skill, you become a shelter for others in the storm. Your peace becomes contagious. Your strength becomes an inspiration. Your unbothered state becomes a testament to what's possible. Think about the people in your life, your children, your spouse, your colleagues. They're watching how you handle pressure, how you respond to criticism, how you deal with setbacks. When you develop mental fortitude, you're not just changing your life. You're showing them a better way to live. Marcus discovered this truth firsthand. And six months after implementing these principles, one of his team members pulled him aside and said, I don't know what's changed, but the whole office feels different since you changed. His mental fortitude had created a ripple effect that transformed his entire work. Here's another powerful aspect of mental fortitude. It compounds over time, just like compound interest in your bank account. Every small victory, every moment you choose peace over chaos builds upon itself. Before you know it, what once seemed impossible becomes your new normal. We weren't created to be at the mercy of every wind that blows. You were designed to be stable, secure, and unshakable. Mental fortitude isn't about becoming something you're not. It's about unveiling who you were always meant to be. As we move forward, we're going to explore how to take this mental fortitude and use it to turn every adversity into an advantage. Because here's the truth, when you're mentally strong, when you're truly unbothered by the small stuff, you're free to focus on what really matters. You're free to pursue your purpose with undivided attention. Are you ready to discover how to turn every challenge into a stepping stone? Are you prepared to see how your newfound mental fortitude can transform not just your response to adversity, but the very nature of adversity itself? That's exactly where we're heading next. Now that you've built that foundation of mental fortitude, let me share something remarkable with you. Every setback, every criticism, every obstacle that's meant to break you, they're actually hidden opportunities waiting to be discovered. You see, the very things that feel like your greatest adversities right now are secretly setting you up for your biggest breakthroughs. Raise your hands if you've ever faced a situation that felt completely unfair, utterly devastating at the time. But looking back, you can see how it led to something better. Look around. Those raised hands tell a powerful story about the nature of adversity. Let me tell you about Rachel, a woman who lost her high-paying corporate job during the economic downturn of 2023. She had three kids in college, a mortgage to pay, and suddenly her world seemed to crumble. But here's where it gets interesting. Instead of letting this adversity crush her, she did something remarkable. She used it as fuel. You see, Rachel had always dreamed of starting her own business, but the comfort of her corporate salary had kept her playing it safe. When that safety net was ripped away, she was forced to face her fears. Today, her consulting firm employs 15 people and serves clients in three countries. What looked like devastating adversity became the push she needed to step into her destiny. Here's a powerful truth. Adversity is not your enemy, it's your trainer. Think about how diamonds are formed. They require extreme pressure, intense heat, and significant time. Without these seemingly harsh conditions, a diamond would remain just carbon, ordinary, unremarkable. Your challenges are creating something precious within you. But here's the key. It's not enough to just endure adversity. Anyone can endure. What we're talking about is learning to leverage it. Think of it like Aikido, the martial art where you use your opponent's force against them. Every bit of negative energy aimed at you becomes fuel for your forward momentum. Let me give you a practical tool. I call the adversity alchemy framework. When faced with a challenge, ask yourself these three questions. What is this teaching me? How can this make me stronger? 
What opportunities does this create? These questions transform you from a victim of circumstances into an alchemist who turns lead into gold. He crossed this every major breakthrough in human history came from solving a problem. Every successful business started by addressing a need. Every great leader emerged through overcoming significant challenges. What if the adversity you're facing right now is actually preparing you for your greatest contribution? I remember meeting James, a young entrepreneur who had his first business fail spectacularly. He lost everything, his savings, his investors, money, even his self-confidence. But instead of letting this define him, he started studying his failure with the intensity of a scientist. He documented every mistake, every wrong turn, every lesson learned. I think years later, James launched his second business, a consulting firm that helps other entrepreneurs avoid the very mistakes that had cost him everything. His adversity became his expertise. His pain became his purpose. His failure became the foundation of his future success. When you learn to see adversity as advantage in disguise, you develop what I call opportunity vision. Just like someone trained in art can see the subtle variations in color that others miss, you begin to see the potential in problems that others overlook. Think about water for a moment. When it meets an obstacle, it doesn't stop. It finds another way. It flows around over or under whatever stands in its path. And in doing so, it shapes mountains, creates valleys, and carves new paths. That's exactly how you want to approach adversity. Not as something that stops you, but as something that shapes you into something more powerful. Let me share another tool with you. The contrast principle. Every shadow in your life is evidence of light. The darker the shadow, the brighter the light casting it. When you understand this, you begin to see that your greatest struggles often point directly to your greatest strengths. Consider Maria, a woman who struggled with, with severe anxiety. For years, she saw it as her greatest weakness. But then she learned to turn this adversity into advantage. Her deep understanding of anxiety led her to create support groups for others facing similar challenges. What she once saw as her greatest limitation became her unique qualification to help us. Here's a truth that might shake you. Your adversities aren't random. They're not punishment. They're preparation. Every criticism that tries to tear you down is actually highlighting where you need to build yourself up stronger. Every rejection that seems to push you back is actually redirecting you to where you need to go. Think about a space shuttle for a moment. The same atmospheric pressure that could destroy it is what it uses to stay on course. The heat that could burn it up becomes the very thing that proves its strength. That's how you want to approach your adversities. Not as forces trying to destroy you, but as pressures designing to direct you. Some of you are facing situations right now that seem impossible. Maybe it's a health challenge, a financial crisis, or a relationship breakdown. I want you to understand something. The size of your adversity often indicates the size of the advantage waiting on the other side. Big problems create big opportunities for those who know how to look for them. Let me teach you another powerful technique. The future gratitude practice. When facing adversity, fast forward in your mind to one year from now. Imagine yourself looking back at this current challenge and writing a thank you letter to it. What will you be grateful for? What strengths will you have developed? What opportunities will have emerged? You see, gratitude shouldn't just be for what's good in your life right now. It should extend to what's difficult because those difficulties are shaping you into someone stronger, wiser, and more capable than you were before. Remember this, Sykes was once a disaster. Every expert was once a beginner. Every success story includes chapters of failure. The difference lies in how they viewed and used their adversities. Think about a master sculptor working with marble. To create something beautiful, they must chip away at the stone. Each strike of the chisel might look like damage to an untrained eye. But the sculptor knows every piece removed brings the masterpiece closer to revelation. Your adversities are like that chisel, revealing the masterpiece within you as we prepare to move into our next section about creating your emotional shield. I want you to remember something crucial. 
You're not just learning to survive adversity. You're learning to thrive because of it. Every challenge that comes your way is now an opportunity in disguise. Every criticism is feedback for growth. Every setback is a setup for a comeback. Are you ready to discover how to create an emotional shield so strong that not only do adversities bounce off it, but they actually strengthen it? Because that's exactly where we're heading next. Into the art of building emotional resilience that turns every attack into an opportunity for growth. Now that we understand how to transform adversity into advantage, let's explore something even more powerful. Building an emotional shield so impenetrable that negativity doesn't just bounce off it, it actually makes you stronger. Think of the last time someone's words or actions really got under your skin. What if I told you that moment could have been an opportunity to strengthen your emotional armor instead of leaving you wounded? Take a moment and imagine yourself surrounded by a force field of calm, a shield so powerful that nothing can disturb your inner peace without your permission. This isn't just visualization. It's a reality that you can create, and I'm going to show you exactly how. Let me introduce you to Sarah, a high school teacher who used to take every parent's complaint, every student's attitude, and every colleague's criticism personally. She would go home each day feeling emotionally drained, carrying the weight of every negative interaction. But then she learned something that changed everything, the art of emotional shielding. You see, creating an emotional shield isn't about becoming cold or distant. It's about developing the ability to choose what you allow to affect you. Think of it like having a sophisticated filtering system that lets in what serves you and deflects what doesn't. Here's a powerful concept. Your emotional response is your responsibility. No one can make you feel anything without your permission. When you truly understand this, you begin to see that every emotional reaction is actually a choice. I want you to try something right now. Think of the person or situation that most easily triggers negative emotions in you. Now imagine that trigger surrounded by a bubble of light. The bubble doesn't hide the trigger. You can still see it clearly, but it creates a space between you and your reaction to it. This space is where your power lies. Let me share with you the SHIELD method, a practical framework for building your emotional armor. S stands for space, create distance between stimulus and response. H for hold, hold your reaction until you've assessed. Right, for identify, identify what's really triggering. E for evaluate, evaluate if this deserves your emotional energy. L for learn, learn from the trigger. D for decide, decide how you want to respond. David, a corporate executive, used this method to transform his relationship with his critical boss. Instead of immediately reacting to harsh feedback, he learned to create that crucial space between trigger and respond. What used to feel like personal attacks became opportunities for growth. His boss's criticism stopped having power over his emotional state. It's something fascinating. The scientists have discovered that emotional resilience isn't just psychological, it's physiological. When you build your emotional shield, you're actually creating new neural pathways in your brain. You're literally rewiring your response to stress and negativity. Think about a lighthouse for a moment. No matter how fierce the storm, how high the waves, the lighthouse remains unmoved, continuing to shine its light. That's what your emotional shield allows you to become steady, stable, and illuminating even in the midst of chaos. Let me teach you another powerful technique called emotional Aikido. Just like the martial art, it's about redirecting energy rather than absorbing or fighting it. When someone sends negative energy your way, instead of taking it in or throwing it back, you learn to redirect it into something constructive. Consider this. Every time someone tries to disturb your peace, they're actually giving you an opportunity to strengthen your emotional shield. It's like working out at the gym. Each challenge is another rep building your emotional muscles. There's a truth that might surprise you. The strongest emotional shields are actually transparent. They're not walls that keep people out. They're filters that let you engage fully with life while staying protected from what doesn't serve you.
Now, think of it like a screen door. It lets the fresh air and while keeping the insects out. Emily, a social media influencer, faced hundreds of negative comments daily. At first, each one felt like a knife to her heart. But then she learned to create her emotional shield. She developed what I call the three-layer film. Is it true? Is it helpful? Is it necessary for my growth? If a comment doesn't pass through all three layers, it doesn't get to affect her emotional state. Let me share another powerful tool. The mirror technique, when someone's behavior triggers you, turn it into a mirror. What about their behavior is showing you something about yourself that needs attention? This transforms triggers from weapons into teachers. You see, your emotional shield isn't just for protection. It's for projection. When you're emotionally secure, you naturally project that security into your environment. You become a force field of calm that affects everyone around you. Think about water again. When you drop a pebble into a calm pond, it creates ripples that extend far beyond the point of impact. Your emotional state works the same way. When you maintain your calm, it ripples out to affect everyone around you. There's something crucial to understand. Your emotional shield shouldn't just protect you from others. It should also protect you from yourself. Often our harshest critic lives between our own ears. Your shield needs to be just as effective against self-doubt and negative self-talk as it is against external criticism. Let me introduce you to the compassion uh, component of emotional shielding. When you've built a strong emotional shield, you can actually afford to be more compassionate both with yourself and others. You're no longer operating from a place of emotional vulnerability. So you can choose to understand rather than react. But think about this, a bleed time, you maintain your emotional balance in a challenging situation. You're not just protecting yourself. You're teaching others a new way to handle difficulty. Your emotional shield becomes a living example of what's possible. Remember Alex, a customer service representative who used to dread at every angry call. After building his emotional shield, he started seeing these calls differently. Each angry customer became an opportunity to practice emotional stability. Today, he trains other representatives in emotional resilience. There's a powerful practice I call the shield strengthening ritual. Each morning, imagine putting on your emotional armor piece by piece. Visualize it growing stronger with each breath. This isn't just visualization. It's programming your nervous system for resilience. As we prepare to move into our next section about mastering intercom, remember this. Your emotional shield isn't meant to make you invulnerable. It's meant to make you invincible. Not in the sense that nothing can hurt you, but in the sense that nothing can stop you from choosing your response. Are you ready to discover how to maintain absolute calm even in the midst of chaos? Because that's where we're heading next. Into the art of finding and maintaining your center no matter what storms rage around you. Now that you've mastered your emotional shield, Let's explore the ultimate freedom, living a life so authentically yours that other people's opinions become background noise. What would your life look like if you could move through each day completely unbothered by the chaos around you? Think about the last time you hesitated to do something because you worried about what others might think. Raise your hand if you've ever dimmed your light to make others comfortable. Look around, we've all been there. But today, that changes. Let me share the story of Marcus, a corporate executive who spent years wearing suits he hated, attending social events that drained him, and living a life that looked perfect on paper but felt empty inside. One day, he asked himself a simple but powerful question. If nobody could judge me, what would I do differently? That question sparked a transformation. The day Marcus runs his company wearing whatever he wants, works from different countries every month, and has never been more successful. The secret? He learned to live unbothered. Here's a profound truth. Living unbothered isn't about not caring. It's about caring so deeply about your authentic self that external noise loses its power. It's about being so clear about who you are and what you want that others' expectations become irrelevant. Just think of yourself as a radio. There are countless stations 
Broadcasting opinions, judgments, and expectations. Living unbothered means tuning into your own frequency and turning down the volume on everything else. The noise doesn't stop. You just stop letting it affect your signal. Let me introduce you to the authenticity algorithm. Define, align, shine. Define what truly matters to you. Align your actions with those values and shine unapologetically. When you follow this algorithm, something magical happens. The right people and opportunities naturally gravitate toward you. Consider Lisa, a single mother who used to exhaust herself trying to meet society's expectations of perfect parenting. She was constantly comparing herself to Instagram moms and feeling like she was failing. Then she discovered something powerful, the art of being unbothered. And she started creating her own definition of successful parenting. She stopped trying to make picture perfect meals and started having picnics on the living room floor. She quit forcing herself to attend every school event and chose quality time over quantity. Well, the result, both she and her children are happier than ever. Here's a tool I call the unbothered filter. Before letting something affect your peace, ask yourself, will this matter in five years? Is this aligned with my values? Does this person's opinion truly count in my life? If the answer is no, let it flow past. You like water off a duck's back. You see, living unbothered doesn't mean you never face challenges or feel emotions. It means you choose which challenges are worth your energy and which emotions deserve your attention. It's about being selective with your energy investment. Think about a mountain for a moment. While storms rage and winds howl around it, the mountain remains unmoved. It doesn't try to fight the weather. It simply exists in its magnificence. That's what living unbothered looks like. Standing firm in who you are while letting the storms pass. Let me share another powerful concept, the joy compass. Instead of navigating life based on others' expectations, let your joy be your guide. When making decisions, ask yourself, does this align with my authentic self? Does this move me closer to my vision of my best life? Remember Jennifer, who spent years pursuing a law career because that's what her family expected. The day she decided to be unbothered by their disappointment and follow her passion for art, everything changed. But today, her paintings sell for thousands. But more importantly, she's living a life that feels being unbothered isn't selfish. It's essential. When you live authentically, you give others permission to do the same. Your unbothered life becomes a lighthouse for others seeking their own freedom. Let me teach you the energy economy principle. Think of your energy as currency. Every time you let someone's opinion, judgment, or expectation bother you, you're spending that currency. Living unbothered means being a wise investor of your energy. Consider this, this every moment you spend worried about what others think is a moment you could be creating, loving, growing, or simply being. The math is simple. The less energy you spend on being bothered, the more you have for living your best life. There's a practice I call unbothered boundaries. To start seeing your peace as a precious garden, you get to decide what grows there and what doesn't. You get to choose who enters and who stays outside. Your boundaries aren't walls. They're loving filters that protect your peace. I think about successful people you admire. Notice how many of them seem unbothered by criticism. That's not coincidence. Being unbothered isn't just a state of mind. It's a superpower that allows you to take risks, be innovative, and live authentically. Let me share the freedom framework. Release reports. Release the need for approval. Replace external validation with self-validation. And reinforce your authentic choices with daily actions that align with your values. Consider Michael, a writer who used to obsess over every review and comment. He learned to be unbothered not by ignoring feedback, but by choosing which feedback deserved his attention. Today, his books reach millions because he writes from his truth, unbothered by critics who don't understand his vision. Here's a truth that might shaking approval is the moment you start receiving it naturally. When you live unbothered, you become magnetic. People are drawn to those who are unapologetically themselves. As we wrap up our journey together, 
Remember this, uh, living unbothered, living in destination, it's a daily choice. Each morning you have the opportunity to choose peace over perfection, authenticity over approval, and personal truth over public opinion. Your best life is waiting on the other side of what bothers you. It's time to step into that life with confidence, grace, and an unshakable commitment to being uniquely, unapologetically you. Because when you live unbothered, you don't just exist, 